Hello everyone, it's your Peacekeeper, and it's time for the next video in our How To Play series on the German Destroyer line. This is the Tier 9 Z-46, and the Z-46 is the lead ship of the Type 1936C class of destroyers. They were planned to be built for the Kriegsmarine. There were five ships in the class, Z-46 to Z-50, but only two ships were ever actually laid down, Z-46 and Z-47, and they were laid down on October 8th, 1941, but were destroyed, unfinished, in 1945 by Allies that were, by the Allies as they were moving through the shipyards. The primary design change for the Type 1936 to C destroyers is the change from 15 centimeter guns to 12.8 centimeter guns in three twin mounts with one forward and two aft. These guns were supposedly quick firing guns. The Type 1936C destroyers also featured radar based fire control systems for the primary armament as well as an improved anti-aircraft gun complement. The geared turbines in the Type 1936Cs were taken from a series of large destroyers that were supposed to be built, but were not finished due to damage sustained during an air raid, uh, those basically being a group of destroyer leaders that were never actually completed, and I will not attempt to speak the German word that they have for them. Um, as, because none of these ships were ever actually completed, there's no service history, so we'll kind of skip right on ahead to their in-game play style. Z-46 represents a very strong destroyer that has very good offensive firepower, pretty good maneuverability with good torpedoes. The ship is also very stealthy for a Tier 9 destroyer with a 5.9 kilometer detection range. The addition of Hydro rounds out the strengths of the ship, and it really allows this destroyer to cautiously push caps and punish those who sit in smoke without being able to have their own spotting. In fact, if you're very good with the spotting mechanics in this game, uh, Z-46 is very, very strong, and we'll see a little bit of that in the battle video. The AP is also very useful, even on broadside destroyers, but it loses its effectiveness outside of the perfectly broadside profile, thanks to having, you know, a fairly narrow penetration range. And uh, if you're going to shoot at something more heavily armored than a destroyer with that AP, you should probably be aiming at the upper belt area on that ship, and we will see a little bit of that as well in the battle video. The HE has a very low fire chance and feels anemic in its terms of its damage. It's not the most damaging 5-inch or 128-millimeter-esque uh, gun mounts, but, uh, you know, it, it does work at least starting fires, you know, if you run all of the fire flags. Personally, I don't. Um, I don't run, like, demo expert or anything on my captain, so... That to me is not uh, not not something that I rely upon on this ship. Uh, the HE is not nearly as useful against targets as the AP is. However, if a target is angled, your only option is to use HE. Uh, the ability to equip the Tier 9 and Tier 10 upgrade module allows you to pick and choose how the ship is set up. Uh, the, the torpedo reload module is particularly handy in making this ship just absolutely spam torpedoes. With it, the torpedo reload with torpedo armament expertise on the captain is a very short 68.9 seconds. Uh, torpedoes don't do the world's greatest damage, but they're fast, reasonably stealthy, and uh, they come out very quickly. <laughs> I mean, you just 70, basically 70 seconds on a reload for torpedoes at tier 9. <laughs> very, very quick reload on those. You can also mount the gun rate of fire upgrade if you wish to drop the, the rate of fire on this. Uh, however, you know, even with all of the upgrades, you know, you're, you're only looking at about U.S. destroyer, uh, you know, ability in terms of rate of fire. It's already four seconds, which is pretty good. So cutting that even further, you run into diminishing returns on the on the upgrade modules because of, you know, 10 percent of four seconds is only 0.4 seconds, not a huge change in terms of the rate of fire. Overall, the only real downside that I could really think of is the lack of anti-aircraft capability. Uh, it's there, and it can shoot down aircraft. However, it, it's really not very strong. It's not something I would rely upon. It, it's, it's marginally better than, like, Yugamo's 
AA is. And Yugamo has okay AA as well. Uh, the only other thing that really wasn't fantastic is the overall turning radius at 670 meters. The ship is... Uh, it's got a very large turning circle. But, thankfully, we don't see very many carriers, and a little bit of pre-planning ahead can eliminate the turning circle radius issue. Okay, so let's talk about some stats. Uh, this ship has 23,050 hit points. I caution to add that this ship actually... I've actually put on um, survivability expert on this ship. Uh, I'm playing this ship a little bit different than maybe I had originally anticipated with my uh, builds for these destroyers. But the survivability expert's going to add 350 hit points per tier. So there's nine tiers, so that's... A lot of hit points. <laughs> Math. That's that's hard. So we're, we're up to 23,050 hit points, up to 20 millimeters of armor, which is just enough to arm most cruiser AP. <sighs> Main battery consists of three dual 128 millimeter guns. They have an 11 kilometer range, 4 second reload, 10 second 180 degree turn time, 91 meter dispersion. 1,500 HE shell damage, and just for comparison, where's my gearing at? Uh, granted, this is a tier higher, but they all fire the same thing. 1,800 on the U.S. destroyers, and where's Khabarovsk? Like 8 million, yeah, 1,900. So you can see not exactly the top of the list in terms of HE shell damage there. 7% fire chance. Again, that's without flags or demo expert. That's actually higher than the U.S. rate, but I feel like the U.S. starts fires better. Maybe it's just my RNG. The real benefit of the German destroyers is always going to be that AP shell damage. 3,000 damage from a 128 millimeter shell. Citadels aren't very common. However, having that higher base damage does help with those normal penetrating hits and stacking them up. We will see in the battle I actually lop off 6 thousand hit points off of a broadside Henri Quet. Uh, the Henry the Fourth did not uh, anticipate that. I bet not. Well, Eleven kilometer firing range and the AP and HE shell velocity is the same at eight hundred thirty meters per second, which is pretty much moving out. All right, so the torpedoes sixty eight point nine second reload time, six second one hundred eighty degree turn time. And 14,400 damage, which has been the standard since, like, Tier 6, I think, in terms of damage output. 10-kilometer range, 1.4-kilometer detection range, 67 knots in total speed. Any aircraft defense, we have three quad 20-millimeter flak fuelings, a four dual 37-millimeter flax, and then, of course, the 128-millimeter dual-purpose guns, uh, three dual mounts of that. Now, your AA bubble starts at 5 kilometers, steps down to 3.5, and, and then to 2. Anybody playing U.S. Destroyers recognizes those as being the 5-inch gun mounts, the 40-millimeter gun mounts, and the 20-millimeter gun mounts. Unsurprising. 37.5 knot speed, 670-meter turning circle radius, 3.6-second rudder shift time. Detection range by sea of 5.9 kilometers. That's going to be with Concealment Expert and the Concealment Module. 3.6 kilometers detection range by air. Speaking of those modules, I am running main armaments at mod 1 in the first slot for the 20% reduction in the chance of your main battery and torpedo tubes being incapacitated, 50% increase in the hit point pool of your main battery and torpedo tubes, as well as a 20% reduction in the time it takes to repair them if they get incapacitated. You could also run magazine mod 1 for the 70% reduction in the risk of your magazine getting detonated if you are out of detonation flags. In the second slot, I am running Propulsion Systems Mod 1 for the 20% reduction in the chance of your engine being incapacitated, as well as a 20% reduction in the time it takes to repair them. Uh, you could also run Steering Gears Mod 1, which is the same as Propulsion Mod 1, except for for your steering gears. It just kind of depends on which one you hate losing more. For me, I hate losing my engine more. I, you can always maneuver with last stand, but crawling away at 20 knots with last stand really hurts. So that's why I run that. In the third slot, I am running Aiming Systems Mod 1 for the 7% reduction in the dispersion of my main battery, as well as a 20% increase in the speed at which the torpedo tubes traverse. Um, you could run AA Guns Mod 2, but I really don't 
think that this is that useful of an upgrade. Um, yeah, I mean, it, you're you're never going to be a U.S. destroyer or high tier Soviet destroyer with defensive fire. So, personally, I wouldn't run AA guns mod two, especially since it's going to only push out your detection range by air. No thanks. Uh, in the fourth slot, steering gears mod two is what I choose for the twenty percent reduction in the rudder shift time. Uh, you could, in theory, run propulsion mod two for the decrease. Sorry, increase in engine power when the ship first starts moving, as well as a fifty percent reduction in the time it takes to reach full power when accelerating. This really only affects the ship in that negative six to six knot range. It's really useful for sitting in smoke or hiding behind islands. But uh, I personally would rather have Steering Gears Mod 2 just to make the ship a little bit more comfortable to turn. In the fifth slot, I am running Concealment Systems Mod 1 for the 5% increase in dispersion of the shells fired at you, as well as the 10% reduction in the detection range of the ship. That's what gets you down to 5.9 kilometers, makes you one of the more stealthy destroyers at Tier 9. And finally, in the last slot, the Tier 9 upgrade slot, I am running Torpedo Tubes Mod 3 for the 15% reduction in the reload time of your torpedoes. However, it does come with a 50% increase in the chance of your torpedo tubes being incapacitated. Um, that's part of the reason why we run Preventative Maintenance on the Captain. It's part of the reason why we run Main Armaments Mod 1. It basically negates that. You could also run Main Battery Mod 3 for the 12% reduction in the Main Battery Reload Time. It's also going to come with a corresponding decrease in the speed at which your turrets turn. Uh, not really sure that's worth it. Like I spoke earlier, a 12% reduction, it comes out to be like 3.4 sec or sorry, 3.6 seconds on the reload. Really not a huge thing. I guess if you combine it with basic firing training, you can really get it down there. Uh, gunfire control systems mod 2 not recommended 16% increase in the main battery firing range not worth it and AA guns mod 3 again the ship is never going to be a, a perfect anti-aircraft gun uh, ship the lack of defensive fire makes that really not attainable but it's there if you would like to run it the only other thing to really talk about is the hydro because it does see an increase in the detection range of enemy ships uh, up to 4.68 kilometers for ships, 3.27 kilometers for torpedoes. All right, let's go look at this in a battle video. All right, so I've chosen this video not because it's a super high damage or super high kill count, but I chose it because it demonstrates some of the um, spotting mechanic ideas in this game, being able to use various aspects of the enemy's ability to spot you to still engage them. Uh, of course, that comes with Hydro. Uh, the map is Sleeping Giant, and we are all the way over at the D cap. And with the D uh, cap, uh, you know, we got the opportunity to deploy Hydro and basically push anything out of the D cap. I mean, that that's what's nice about this. Oop, there's the horn. Uh, that's what's nice about this ship is the, the hydroacoustic really does open up and expose a lot of ships in caps, which with support is fantastic. Without it is uh, suicidal. <laughs> I mean, I guess unless you run into, you know, a Japanese destroyer and feel that you can gun it down before it guns you down and, uh, you know, have an advantage there, I suppose. But if... I, I don't know. To me, there's a lot of risk in charging into a cap without support. You won't see me do it too terribly often unless it's towards the end of the game, and I know that I have a distinct advantage. Um, a little bit of a discussion there going on in the chat about needing more destroyers. Five per side, ten total in the game. Uh, that It does make for an interesting battle. Uh, this match also doesn't have any torpedo hits, so you're going to see almost entirely gun hits. We're going to see good use of AP. We're also going to see good use of HE. Uh, you are going to see some torpedo play to, um, you know, kind of dissuade people from coming a certain direction and force them into a positions they don't like. But unfortunately, we don't have any torpedo hits to talk about. So on this cap, you know, you saw me speed boost right away to get into the cap. 
Uh, not going to be terribly surprised when that happens, when the, the cap gets, uh, you know, cap or, uh, the cap gets blocked like that, but look, Udaloy. Quick, everybody shoot at him. Uh, for the record, I would love to have the hydroacoustic special module on a German destroyer. I think it would be the ultimate in trolling, because your hydroacoustic would last forever. Um, Udaloy just briefly spotting me there. And then he goes back behind the island as we both try and shoot at each other. Uh, you you know, this this map, these islands are tall enough, and I, I'm really curious to know what Wargaming was thinking. And I, I really suspect... Well, that's a radar there from the Baltimore. I really suspect that the reason why... Well, it could be Hydra from the Z-52. I really suspect that the reason why... What is the Havarovs doing? <laughs> what is he doing? Anyway, I really suspect the reason for this map is because uh, Wargaming wanted to try and, uh, you know, see what direction people go on this map and, and, and try and figure out how to make further maps. Because if you look at the way the map is laid out, everything seems so sterile and balanced. You know, you look at the west side of the map, there's only two ways in. They're from the sides. Um... It's not super useful to have them from the sides like that. Ooh, we got a Bismarck coming from behind there. And look at that. No longer detected after the Z-52 goes down. Hmm. I wonder what this could be. Uh, but it, anyway, going back to the discussion about the map, if you look at the middle of the map, it's basically wide open. And you look at the right side of the map, and it's nothing but a mess of islands. And uh, it definitely exposes some of the map design choices made by Wargaming. And um, it, it, it's fascinating. I'm, I'm really curious to see where they go with this. So able to use the smoke here to uh, against them, actually. It was actually our Havarov smoke, which was also very surprising. But since we're getting close to the Sudaloy, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to engage him as best we can. Really kind of wish I had pre-turned those rear turrets. Not mattering. <laughs> uh, so we're being detected by the radar from the Baltimore, which we cannot see. I'm going to try and launch some torpedoes, because I'm pretty sure that uh, he's going to try and come out. Just a matter of, well, maybe, maybe, maybe not. We do have 10-kilometer torpedoes, which are extremely useful. And here you can see we are not being engaged by any enemy ships. Well, the Baltimore is trying. Failing. Minotaur is trying. Failing. <laughs> and we're no longer detected, which means that we can uh, abuse this smoke... For our own favor. So now we're going to back up in our smoke. And one interesting thing to note is this ship actually has the ability to... Uh, well, we got launched one set short. Launched both sets short. The ship actually has the ability to outrun its smoke deployment going in reverse. Really kind of annoying, but... Anyway, AP here. Averaging about 1,400 damage or so. Uh, really... That's really not too shabby, all things considered. Oop. All bounces or shatters. That's going to do some damage. Okay, so 300 damage. That's not very good. Torpedoes locking him into this profile. And down he goes. So now we have basically capped D. Or we're about to cap D without any real interference. And we've not done a whole lot of damage. But we've spent a lot of time spotting enemy ships that are really key to get out of this match. One, getting the Baltimore out of that position is very critical for moving up. But the more importantly, getting rid of that Udaloy is is really the most important aspect of, of what you just saw at the first part of this. So like I said, this match may not be the highest damage, may not be the highest kill count, may not be 189,000 damage with the Kraken and, and, you know, every other award in there. But there was a lot of key play in this first part that didn't involve us doing really any damage to anything, but just spotting everything using our, you know almost two minute long hydro to expose enemy ships overall in terms of caps you know we're ahead barely on points we've got two caps they've got two caps so it's fairly even in that regard but what we do know is that there's at least one shimikaze straight ahead of us and we know that because of the torpedoes where they came from those are minotaur torps there that we just saw and now he is being spotted and so that's going to add yet another element to this match. We've got HE loaded. Uh, mostly because I wasn't really sure what we would encounter as we come around this corner. Again, rear turrets uh, 
Keeping those guys engaged is really kind of difficult, it seems. Quick turn to the side there, and again, we're, we're back to using the, the smoke kind of against the, the enemy destroyer here, but we've also got our hydro going to keep him spotted because we are now in range. Plus, it gives advanced warning to the battleships that, hey, look, Shimakaze torpedoes incoming. And the Shimakaze, I think, was more or less interested in trying to get me dead than anything else. So, Shimakaze, 4K, 4.6K, out. We're about to lose him around the edge of the island, so we're going to try and move up a little bit. Some things to keep in mind, we got to Enriquet up ahead, 11 kilometers out. Not a threat at this point, but it looks like he's coming around the edge of the mountain this way. There's a smoke cloud up here, which tells me that there is a destroyer, another destroyer, aside from the Shimakaze, whom we just saw get out of his smoke that was ending. And I am still spotting him with my Hydro, so so long as somebody shoots at him, it will be a good day. Henri Cat making a turn in, launching a, a fairly widespread, all things considered, and then we're going to go ahead and deploy our smoke. And HE, first salvo, we get a fire on Henri, but uh, lose sight of him, so shooting kind of blind. And there he finally shows up again, not because he's in my Hydro, I don't know why, but... You know, 1,400 damage, not doing too bad there. 990, you can see not really doing any more additional damage than the H or the AP would. But now he's starting to expose a broadside profile. Now start looking at how quickly his hit point pool starts dropping. There was 6,000 damage right there, all by itself. <laughs> and the damage just keeps racking up. There's three grand. There was another 2,500 or so. We're just going to follow him around, 2,200. We're, we're just going to keep on. You can see as he starts to angle, the damage numbers start to fall off slightly. Okay, so now we're out, out in the open with 3,300 damage, and he's only got 4,200 hit points left, 1,500 hit points left. One salvo, that's all it's going to take. He gets one salvo off, and because Henri has particularly high pen value on those guns, he overpens and does, you know, about 3k damage. There's 1,300 lopped off of a Shimikaze that was kind of angled. And then nothing but bounces the next. I guess we did 990, but... you Anyway, you saw the DPM capabilities of having, you know, that AP was very, very capable of just nuking that already down. I mean, fast. Unbelievably fast. And it was almost like a mini Minotaur with how quickly the the AP damage started to add up. And of course, at this point, you know, the, the match is basically over. We're, we're capping two caps at the same time, and they've only got one destroyer left down here on this side, one battleship up north, a cruiser. Uh, at this point, really not a whole lot left to do, you would think, aside from just cap and move on. Now, Z-46... German destroyer, obviously, it's the same destroyer as me. Look at how many hit points he has. Oh, that's a Z-52. Look at how many more hit points the Z-52 has than I do. I mean, he's nearly full health. And he is, uh, you know, deploying his smoke, trying to... I think he's got his hydro running, but if it were me and I were in his shoes, I would be running out the back end of that smoke, knowing that there's a Des Moines coming. Not, he doesn't know that I'm coming, but, uh, you know... It's always a safe assumption. So if I were him, I would be trying to, you know, hide as best as I possibly could. So if I were in his shoes, I'd be running too. Trying to stay alive as long as humanly possible. So there's the capture of the sea cap. Looks like our northern expeditionary force has kind of fallen apart. That's fine, though. It keeps the game going just a little bit longer. We got a Shimikaze up there dealing with the St. Louis Ibuki. Oh, no, that's a Minotaur. <laughs> Apparently, I can't read a minimap. So the Z-52 is obviously running uh, radio position, which is fine. Um, a little bit of a victory horn there. And like I said, this match isn't the most high-damaging match. And we've still got some damage to do, so fear not. We're not completely done. But now that we're detected again, you know, we had just a margin of a second there of additional spot time. The key to, to dealing with the... The AP on a Z-52 is to slow down and turn, deploy smoke, hydro. He's within. He's not within hydro range, but 
we can't sit here and tank damage this long. And now he's exposed himself completely. As long as I keep a decent angled profile, there's not a whole lot he's going to be able to do to engage me. Um, switching, keep an AP loaded, because he's going to still be broadside to us for quite a long time, but we've evened out the match, and the North Carolina pokes him for the finish. So now, with as little hit points as we've got, uh, we've got options that we've got to deal with. We, our whole team has finally uh, managed to turn around and head north. Points-wise, we're doing okay. Ship-wise, we're doing more than okay. We basically double them. We actually more than double them. Up to 65,000 damage using spotting mechanics to our advantage. And in the case of that uh, Z-52 there, once we got him firing at us, it was just a matter of time before something else spot hit, spotted him, and so we were able to slow down, slam on the brakes, deploy smoke, conceal ourselves so he couldn't hit us, and move on. We've got our speed boost back up, so we're going to pop it right away. At this point, I was really trying to decide which direction I was going to go. We've got two different ways that we could go. We could go to the west and try and see if maybe the Montana and Ibuki are going to continue this out. Really need more information about whether or not that's the... Before we make that choice, whether or not that's the right choice. When we see the Ibuki, we see the Montana now. We see smoke. That means the Minotaur is there as well. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to charge up the middle with the rest of our team. And at this point, the match is definitely over. But... Things can always change at the last minute. You know, we've been going on for a while. Ships can make mistakes. Montana is nothing to sneeze at, even with an Iowa, a Yamato, uh, and North Carolina. I think we got an Alabama hanging around. No, he died. Hindenburg and Des Moines. You know, there are, there are definitely ways in which we could still lose this if, if the right level of uh, things happen in the right order. One other nice thing about this ship is with its concealment, so long as we don't get spotted by the Montana, the Ibuki, and the Minotaur will pop up in their smoke. Assuming that they survive those torpedoes going in there, which I suspect they probably will. But you never know. So we're going to keep on charging. Like I said, as long as we don't get spotted by the Montana, which is fairly easy because we've got a you know 5.9 kilometer detection range, uh, we should be able to spot them before they spot, uh, they're able to spot us. And, of course, both those ships do have access to Hydro. However, of them, I think only the Minotaur is probably going to be running it. And you can see he is still around. So the Ibuki died. Minotaur is still camping in his smoke. Shimakaze is also charging headlong into this. Switching to AP because I know that the... There he is. Okay, so the Minotaur is broadside to us. And so, we take a little bit of a risk here. We are detected by the Montana because we're firing. Minotaur is not looking at us. Look at these damage numbers start to add up, though. Well, 990, 990. That's 1,800 damage. There's there's a 2,000 plus a 990 followed up after that. We managed to take temporarily take out a turret. Now we're sitting in smoke ourselves, and, well, we didn't get much chance to shoot at Mr. Black Eagle. But, uh, <laughs> we did get to shoot at him. 77,056 damage, two caps. Well, our options are to chase after the Montana. We don't have any more smoke. He's going away from the only island that we could use. He's running away. Probably not going to be a terribly good idea. So we'll just go ahead and we'll shoot at him. Yeah, we're out of range now, so we'll just go ahead and try and cap. And he's only got you know, 3,500 hit points left anyway, so this match is basically over. So hopefully you guys saw in this match the various different ways in which you can use the Hydro, you can use other spotting mechanics to kind of engage enemy ships in this. 77,056 damage, two kills, two caps, three fire set, but we managed to finish on the top of our team, 2235 in base XP, uh, almost 400,000 potential damage, but I've had better games in the in this ship with potential damage, but overall, I, I do like Z-46. I almost like it more than Z-52. That seems blasphemous, but uh, you know, it, it's just it's a good boat. I like it. Anyway, I'm your Peacekeeper. Like, comment, subscribe, and thank you for watching.